Hello, this is Professor Barbara Guess, and I'm talking to you today about the nature of ethical disagreement. So, I love this essay. The reason I like this essay is because it helps you to learn to analyze yourself and others. And it does so by showing you how to basically dissect an ethical disagreement. And disagreement here isn't like a fight or an argument. It doesn't have a negative connotation to it. It's an ethical discussion. So if you have two people disagreeing about some kind of ethical issue, right, wrong, good, and bad, this is a great way to try to make sense of what's going on. And it's also a great way for you to figure out how to go deeper. And when I say go deeper, what do I mean? If you are asked a question um, and I say, hey, how do you feel about, no, I'm not going to do politics, how about, how do you feel about Kim Kardashian? And your reaction is, oh, don't really like her. That is your opinion. It's your feeling. And it's on the surface of your mind. Everybody knows what's on the surface of their mind. You know how you feel about things. But this author is going to call that an attitude, a psychological disposition for or against something. Most people call it an opinion um, or emotional response. But each essay, we're using the terminology used by the author. So, on the surface of your mind is your attitude. Now, if I try to have an ethical discussion with you about Kim Kardashian, and we never go beyond our attitudes, I'm going to say, eh, I don't like her. You're going to say, oh, she's great, you're wrong. And I'm going to say, you're wrong. And the conversation is not going to go anywhere. It's called right fighting. If you've ever met somebody that does it, they basically argue opinions. They never go into depth to find out why they have the opinions or the attitudes they have. So if you can't figure out why you feel the way you feel, the conversation is going to go into a stalemate. Or worse, it's going to end up into an unpleasant disagreement where there's name calling and so forth. So if I don't like Kim Kardashian and that's my opinion or my attitude and I want to find out what my belief is, and a belief is a factual statement, something you can say is either true or false, I would have to ask myself questions like, well, why don't you like her? I should have practiced this beforehand. Eh, it, she makes a lot of money without doing much, from what I can tell. Though I will freely admit, if you like Kim Kardashian, no offense to you, I've seen like five minutes of her show once. This is just my feeling. So, am I in a belief yet? She makes money from not doing much. Well, we could probably go farther. If you, you want to go from someone's feelings or attitudes or opinions into a belief statement. Why do they feel the way they feel? So I feel like she's getting a lot of money for not doing much. So what? You have to ask me why again. Well, why is that a bad thing? And then I would answer that if you're going to get a a gain of either money or position or power or something where you hold sway over other people and you have power, I would say, you should use it, you should gain it for a good reason. And a good reason would be something that's intellectual or academic or if you're sports oriented, something that shows a skill or that you're really good at something and she doesn't fit any of those requirements so I'm thinking she gets money for not a good reason so we're getting closer to why I feel the way I feel and if you wanted to turn that into belief statement you could say that Barbara feels that in order to gain large amounts of money or power or prestige you should gain it for being really good at something in the intellectual, uh, creative, or athletic fields. 
Now that is a statement that we could actually have a conversation about. That's something that I could sit down with you and say, oh, how do you feel about this? Well, should you be able to get money for, for a videotape or so? Yeah, I'm not gonna reference that. So should you be able to get money for other reasons? And this is something we could actually have a conversation about, which is why I like this essay for the beginning of this course because you have to learn to analyze your own mind and analyze, help others analyze their mind and to discuss it. If you try to have a discussion on the surface of your mind, on the level of the attitudes, it's never going to get anywhere. You have to ask why and you have to keep asking why until you find a belief statement in which then you can open up a dialogue and have a conversation about it. If you stay on the surface of your mind, just your feelings, you end up with a, I'm right, you're wrong. Name call, name call. If you've ever met someone that you ask them why they feel the way they feel and they just won't go any further, that's a problem in having an ethical discussion. All right, so let's talk more about the essay. This particular essay is asking a specific question. Every essay you read this semester is going to have a philosophical question. The philosophical question for this essay is, can you use reason to resolve ethical disagreements? Now, for this class, I'm going to be using what I call a philosophical checklist. These are six items that you find in every philosophy essay. And this is what you're looking for when you read the essays. In this essay, we're only going to focus on one through four. So the first thing in your philosophical checklist, if what you're looking for when you read the essays is, what is the philosophical question being asked? In this essay, the question being asked is, can reason be used to resolve ethical disagreements? All right. The very next thing you're looking for when you read these essays and these essays are not necessarily going to put them in order for you. You have to look for them. Is to find major terms. So number two in the checklist is to find major terms. Well, if your question is, can you use reason to resolve ethical disagreements? What do you need to define? You need to find a reason. You need to find ethical disagreement. And any key terms that are connected to this that are given in the essay so, if you already read the essay, you know what I'm indicating here. So, reason. It's another way of saying common sense, logic. We're about, when we do the logic section, you'll understand more. It's what your mom means when she looks at you and says, use your head. Um, you're being logical. You're, you're not, you're assessing a situation. Um, based on what's said and analyzing it. You're not just staying in the level of emotions. All right. Now, ethical disagreement. This is a term. In order to define this term, we have to start by defining two other terms we've talked about. The first one is attitude. So under step two, where you have to define your terms, here you're going to define reason, which we just talked about, attitude. An attitude is a psychological disposition for or against something. And then in parentheses you might want to put opinions, feelings, things of those natures. Then a belief. A belief is a factual statement. Factual, I don't mean it's absolutely true. I just mean that it's a statement of which you could say is true or false. I'm not saying whether it is true or false. I'm just saying it's something that can be debated about whether it's true or false. Um, in English, you would call it a declarative sentence, something you can assign a truth value to. All right, an ethical disagreement, because we said both of those to lead up to an ethical disagreement. An ethical disagreement is a disagreement in both attitudes and beliefs. So why does the author specify it's a disagreement in both attitudes and beliefs? Think about it. If 
going back to the question about Kim Kardashian, you say, you ask me, do you like Kim Kardashian? I say, eh, not really. You say, yeah, me either. Is there really much to discuss after that? We're in agreement. We probably won't continue the conversation. Um, but if we disagree and they say, oh, no, I love her. You just don't know enough. Then we're going to start a dialogue and we're going to ask each other questions about why do you feel this way? And the person's going to ask me why I feel that way. And at some point, we're going to find out each other's belief statements. Now, your attitudes will reflect your beliefs. What you feel is based on what you believe. So, if I believe people should not earn money for inconsequential reasons, then that's my belief. The not liking Kim Kardashian is a attitude that's based on that belief. So whatever, we all know our opinions or our feelings about things, but this class, philosophy, ethics, you're going to be analyzing yourself, others, and other people's arguments. So you have to learn to practice going from your attitudes to your belief. You have to practice in having a conversation with somebody else, asking them questions to try to figure out not what they feel, but why they feel the way they feel until you get to a belief statement, which is where you can open up a conversation at. All right. So an ethical disagreement is a disagreement in both attitudes and beliefs. Now, we've defined our major terms. Now, well, there's one more thing we can say about attitudes and beliefs. If you get confused about what's an attitude and what's a belief, there's a way you can check. Now, if I say, I believe some wars are just. And you should say, let's say, I don't know if anybody in the class is named Sarah, but we'll imagine Sarah. Sarah said, believes that no wars are just. Can both of those statements be true at the same time? Think about what the statements say. Barbara believes that some wars are just. Sarah believes that no wars are just. What does it take for the statement, Barbara believes that some wars are just to be true? In order for that statement to be true, I just have to believe it. So that statement's true. Barbara believes some wars are just. Now, as long as Sarah believes that no war is ever just, that statement is true too. There's no conflict here. Both those statements can be true at the same time. But if I take away the words Barbara believes and Sarah believes from those sentences and I say some wars are just and the other sentence is no wars are just, can both of those sentences be true at the same time? No. Because what makes the sentence true is some wars are just. Well, if some wars are just, it can't be true that no wars are just and vice versa. So, in the article, in the essay, if you want to know, if you're confused about whether something is a belief or an attitude, see if they can be true at the same time. If they can both statements can be true at the same time, they're probably an attitude. If they cannot be true at the same time, they're a belief. In the essay, he also talks, if two attitudes can, um, how does he word it? Let's say I ask you to lunch and I say, hey, you want to go to lunch? You say, sure. I, and I'm like, okay, so let's go to Veggie City Diner. Veggie City Diner is a vegetarian diner. And you say, hmm. First off, I want to go to Vegetarian City Diner. Is that an attitude or a belief? That's an attitude because it's a psychological disposition for or against something. I'm, I want to go to Veggie City Diner. And you say, yeah, I'm not a vegetarian. How about we go to barbecue? Let's go to Mission or whatever barbecue place you imagine. Um, 
and your attitude is, let's go to mission. Can both of those attitudes be satisfied at the same time? Satisfied meaning, can we do both at once? Well, the idea was that we go to lunch together, so no, we can't have lunch together at Veggie City Diner and Mission Barbecue at the same time. So, if two attitudes are in conflict and both can't be satisfied at the same time, that's how you can tell that they're an attitude. If you have two conflicting beliefs and they can't both be true at the same time, then you know it's a belief. And that, if you're ever not sure whether something's an attitude or a belief, is the way you can tell the difference between the two. All right, so back to our original question, which was, can you use reason to resolve an ethical disagreement? Step three of the checklist is answer the question. And here I mean, how does the author answer the question? Not you. I want you to think about how you answer these questions, but I'm focused on the essays. Your first thing should be understanding the essays. And then you can figure out what you believe and agree and disagree with the essays about. But the first thing you should do is understand the author's point of view. You don't have to agree with the point of view. You don't have to agree with the argument. You just have to understand it. So, <coughs> this particular author answers the question with sometimes. Sometimes you can use reason to resolve an ethical disagreement, and sometimes you cannot. One second. Sorry. I have a tickle in my throat, and it's driving me crazy. Okay. So, step three is answer the question. Step four in the checklist is... What is the supporting argument used by the author? So, for this essay, I want you to focus on how you use reason to resolve an ethical disagreement. So, the easiest way to understand it is to basically kind of create, I don't know, maybe, um, a little chart. Think about it. If an ethical disagreement, as we said, is a disagreement between a bet, it is a disagreement with both attitudes and beliefs. So you, the first thing you want to do is we're going to use an example, and I'm going to use an example from the essay. It's a really simple example, by the way, um, but it fits the category. So let's imagine I am at home and I am, I've got my son there, my son's four, he's adorable. Um, and i am got the barbecue running and I'm about to put hot dogs and hamburgers on it. And I turn around because inside the living room the phone went off. And as I'm turning I see my son's face and he's looking at the, um, I just blanked on the word for it, excuse me, um, the coals. He's looking at the red coals because they've gotten hot and they're shiny and they're pink and they're red. And I see his face and I say, Brighton, do not touch the coals. And he looks up at me with his sincere face, I won't touch the coals. And considering this is a made up example, I am stupid enough to go inside the house to answer the phone. We know what my son's going to do. He's going to touch the coals. So, before we move forward, think about it. Mom. Son. Now, what do we know? We know that there's a, ethical disagreement is a disagreement in both attitude and belief. So, if you think of it in terms of a little diagram. You got mom over here and son over here. You've got your attitude and your belief. Attitudes reflect beliefs. So mom, me, my attitude is a psychological dis disposition for or against something is do not touch coals. What is my belief system? The attitude reflects the belief. My belief is coals burn. 
Cole's burn is a factual statement and it's a belief statement. Now, my son has never had any experience with coals. So, his attitude is play with the coals. Play with coals. And what is his belief? Well, he's four and he doesn't have experience with coals and he wants to play with the coals because they're shiny and pretty. So his belief is shiny things are fun to play with. So when you're thinking about an ethical disagreement, I know it's kind of messy, think in terms of actually figuring out what the attitude is, what the belief is. If you're here and you, you know the attitude, keep asking questions until you figure out the belief. This is a really simple disagreement, by the way. So this is an ethical disagreement because we disagree in attitudes and we disagree in belief. Now, my son went and touched the coals. What happens? His hand gets burned. His hand gets burned because it was, a, it was a hot coal. He starts crying. He's upset. Now, I come out. I put ice on it. Kiss his boo-boo. And we talk about it. Well, what happened? He learned through reason. And here, reason is going to be a simple version of the scientific method. Create a hypothesis, test the hypothesis, update hypothesis. That is what my son did in this example. His hypothesis was it would be fun to play with the couple. He tested it, found out his hypothesis was wrong, and he updated his hypothesis. So, now he no longer wants to play with the coals. He no longer wants to touch it. So his attitude has changed. But it was his belief that changed first. Now his belief is some shiny things are fun to play with. And his attitude about touching the coals becomes updated to do not touch the coals. So since we know that attitudes reflect belief, if you change your belief based on a reason or argument or scientific method, you've used reason to update your belief. And once the belief is updated, the attitude is updated. Do we still have a disagreement, me and my son, about touching the coal? No, the disagreement is gone. So this is an example when the author is going to say that reason can be used to resolve ethical disagreements. He doesn't think it's always going to work, but he also thinks that it's the best method we have for having ethical discussions. Um, I would agree with that. I mean, you have to use your mind to, and you have to use your reason, you have to use your common sense to have a conversation. You have to... You can't avoid emotions, and you shouldn't try to avoid emotions. Your emotions and how you feel about something is on the surface of your mind. You'll never be able to divorce yourself from your emotions, and you shouldn't try to. In class, you can't let your emotions go crazy. On discussion boards, you can't say mean things or curse or anything like that. Um, you ask yourself why you feel the way you feel. And you keep asking yourself that until you figure out what your belief system is. Because your attitudes will always reflect your belief. And when someone disagrees with you, you don't jump in telling them that they're wrong. Because if anybody's ever told you you're wrong for feeling the way you feel, it's kind of useless. Telling someone not to feel the way they feel doesn't get you anywhere. What you have to do in this class, in ethics and philosophy, and I would argue in life, is find out why someone feels the way they do. Ask them questions. Why, do you, why is that important? How come you decided that? Keep asking questions until you figure out what the belief is underneath the attitude. And that's when you can actually open up the conversation. You can actually have a reasoned conversation. Figure out why you feel the way you feel, what's the belief, and then you can talk about the belief and not just the feeling. And this is what we're going to do in ethics class. And this is why I like this essay as a beginning essay, because you can start practicing now on yourself and others. 
there will be some assignments for you to talk to other people. Um, that is down the road. So for right now, that was the nature of ethical disagreement. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I will talk to you later. Right. And off the thing.